It's Karen with VintageDazzle.Etsy.com here with another vintage haul. Uh, this time it is a couple of silver lots that I bought from my local auction house and then I'm also going to, because it's not very many pieces, I'm going to show you some more things that came from my sister-in-law. I didn't even realize I had this. I found another little stash of jewelry that I didn't know I had. So, And then a few uh, non-jewelry pieces. So, that said, let's get started. This is my receipt from the auction house, and the total that I paid for all of these items was about um, $250. So, um, let's just get started. Um, first off, we have this belt. It's really all about the buckle. It is silver plated, and it is artisan made, and it is signed. Um, Al Harry's, H-E-R-E-S, I think is what that says, USA, and it says Wage Sterling Overlay, but um, as you can see, it's very pretty, pretty etching, engraving, really nice, and the belt shows a little wear, but not too much, so the belt's usable, although you could always transfer it to a different belt if you wanted to. And then I think pretty much everything else in this lot is uh, sterling silver. So we have a bell. Looks like it's hand hammered and it has like a lion with a shield on it. Um, that's what the back looks like. I have, I would guess it's British. Um, I don't know that there's any marks on it anywhere. But um, this stuff has all been, if it's not marked, it's tested. So anyway, it's quite a heavy little piece, little bell. Um, and then we have this <laughs> adorable little Victorian piece. It's a tiny little purse. It is dented a little bit, but like, who cares? It's so cute. It has a little button, button clasp. And then you open it and it's velvet lined keep a few coins in there, or a couple of bills, or I don't know what, um, yeah, that's the side that's not dented, <laughs> that's the side that is dented, but I just thought that was so cute, uh, let's see, this is another belt buckle, it's, uh, modernist, maybe? I'm not exactly sure what the design is, unless it's just purely abstract. At first I thought it looked like swords, but no. I don't know. But it is marked uh, Sterling. No artisan name or anything. But it's really cool. And we have uh, this tiny little pendant that's a little... Um, envelope. So I would like to see this used as a prayer box. You put a little prayer inside the box and wear it. It does snap close. It has some beautiful engraving on it and it is, um, where is it? Oh, it is monogrammed, although I can never read these Victorian monograms, uh, but it's dated 1905 which is the same age as my house. So this was being made at the same time my house was being built, which I think is kind of cool. Then we have another little envelope. And um, this one specifically says stamps on it in a very Victorian script. And sure enough, it has some stamps in it. The stamp state from the 1950s. But this, uh, it has a label on it that says Berm 1913, so not exactly Victorian. Uh, probably somebody deciphered the uh, hallmarks on it. It does have some hallmarks uh, and uh, left the identification there for me, so I don't have to go looking it up. That's probably what's under this sticker, but I'll just leave it there for now so that I don't forget. But what a cute.
cute little necklace. Okay, then we have a bunch of brooches. We have this lovely seahorse. He's quite heavy. And he is marked sterling. And continuing on the animal theme, we have a gecko. Isn't he lovely? And he is marked. Um, it's signed and it says 90, I think might be the year it was made, and it says sterling. Looks like it's signed copyright IO. I don't know. It's on the it's on the tail, but it's hard to read. I'm not sure what it says. But isn't he cute? Okay, and then we have another animal. We have this running rooster pin, which I think is adorable. This one, I believe, is not marked. But, um, it looks, looks silver, and I'm sure that it was tested, so. Yes, he's got some very nice detail on him. And let's see, we have another animal. We have this bird brooch. And he is marked sterling. And, oh, oh, it does have a... Oh, it says sax. Who knew? I think that's what it says. Does it say sax? I'm not sure. I'll have to get a magnifying glass for that. But it's a really pretty, pretty bird. Okay, then we have this cute little bow brooch. This is probably, I'd say, 1940s. And I think that this is signed... Is this the one that's cool? No, this one is um, Danecraft. So it might be 50s, might be it, because it has a it has a copyright. So it might be 50s. I don't know. But it's a very dainty little guy. And then this one, little ring and brooch with the green stones and clear stones. And this one is signed Les Bernard. Ink. No copyright symbol. Um, let's look at that again. Probably 1950s. And, oh, oh, wait, here's another bird. I thought I had another bird in here somewhere. This is either a brooch or a pendant. It's got the loop on the back. And this one is marked... 95 USA copyright MMA 1986. I think that might be Museum of Modern Art. Um, I've done well with those types of you know museum store pieces before. It's there. It's probably a copy of some ancient or not ancient because it's Museum of Modern Art, but something in the museum. Anyway, birdie in a tree. And then we have this little brooch with a dangly on it. This, I'm pretty sure, is 1940s. It is signed uh, Coro Sterling. So Coro did a, a lot of sterling jewelry in the uh, wartime, World War II, when there was a metal shortage. So steel and things like that that would normally go into making costume jewelry was in short supply, so they did a lot of silver. Okay, so that is everything from, from my auction haul. So I'm going to start in on this other jewelry that's from my sister-in-law. I didn't even know I had this. I don't remember this at all. I must not have gone through it very carefully. Um, this is a pair of probably Native American earrings. They've got feather dangles. They are sterling silver and one of them is signed uh, Sterling Charlie. 
So yeah, I would say that's a signed, I don't know who, I'll have to look it up, but that is, I would say, a signed Native American pair of earrings. And they're very nicely done. And then we have these, which are really, really tarnished. Big old dangles. These are fun. I want to wear these. I love big dangles. Uh, these look to be hand stamped. Uh, these probably are Native American, but I think, if I'm not mistaken, they are unmarked, completely unmarked, which is not unusual. And I, they're not marked so silver either, so I'm not even 100% sure they're silver, but given the tarnish on them, they probably are. And that my sister-in-law normally bought silver jewelry. Um, let's see, these are some earring orphans. We have a cuff, and I think they're silver. I don't know what to do with them. I'll just put them in my don't know what to do with silver pile and eventually I'll have enough to sell in a lot, I guess. Uh, I don't know what that is. Uh, there's a little pair of little tiny cowboy boot earrings. These are sterling silver. <laughs> They're very cute. Probably 1980s. And uh, they are marked 95. Those are so cute. Okay, and uh, this is some kind of stud earring. Looks like gold. Looks like it has some tiny, tiny writing that I'm not going to be able to read, but it's like a little, a little stone of some kind. Maybe it's glass. I don't know. Okay, um, we have these earrings which are your earrings that go around your ear cartilage rather than through a hole in your ear. Oh no! Sorry. And there's very specific instructions in this box for how to wear them and how to arrange them. And so I'm keeping them with the box so that whoever receives them will have instructions on how to wear them. But um, these are... These are marked silver, silver, something. But anyway, I think they're sterling. <coughs> Excuse me, I think they're sterling. Okay, we have some cuff bracelets, a whole bunch of cuff bracelets. And this is just a very simple, very tiny um, stamped silver cuff. It is not marked. I suspect it's silver. Then we have this, like a needlepoint turquoise. Very nice, Native American, probably a Navajo or Zuni, maybe. It also is not marked. I oh, wish they would mark their jewelry, but um, no missing stones, so that's nice. And this is a gorgeous piece. This is an engraved sterling silver cuff. This is a Northwest Native American uh, as opposed to Southwest. And this one, I believe, is signed somewhere. Yes, it is signed D. Dennis, 1990. Eh, a little bit dirty. Uh, but yeah, that's a very nice piece. Very nice engraving. And we have another Native American pretty cuff with the turquoise. A nice stamping on it. And it is marked sterling. So it's beautiful. Oh, I love this. I'm just going to show this to you again in case I didn't do it right the first time. Because it's beautiful. Okay, well, this is, I believe this is the last cuff, and this is a lapis lazuli stone with a sil sterling silver cuff. This one is marked sterling, I believe it's Native American, probably Navajo. Really nice, simple, beautiful piece. Okay, let's see, this is a cool brooch. It is a 
brooch it also can be used as a pendant. Okay. You can see it. Nice big hunk of heart-shaped turquoise and a little stone like a amethyst maybe in sterling silver and it is signed N-E-Z sterling. I think that might be pretty desirable. A little more research is needed but I love that piece. Okay, we have some turquoise hoop earrings. Probably Native American. And these are apparently not marked, but certainly those are sterling. Um, we have a few little rings. It's a sweet little turquoise and silver ring. Also probably Native American. Um, it is not... Oh wait, is it marked? It looks like there might be a mark that's just warm. But anyway, I'm sure it's silver and turquoise. And then we have... A couple of bands. Turquoise bands. Wear them together, wear them separately there. They appear to be the same size. And I don't see any markings in them. Nope. And the last ring, another little turquoise, has a heart. And oh, that one's marked 95. Okay, we have, um, this is a beaded, uh, I believe it's turquoise and bone, little beaded necklace, or a bracelet, I mean. Don't know too much about that. This is a nice turquoise tube bead necklace. bracelet, silver beads. Need some shining up. Pretty dull. But it's cute. I'm going to put probably some of these little chain bracelets I'll put together. And this is a turquoise bead necklace with uh, liquid silver beads. stone bracelet. Um, I'm guessing that's not jade. Maybe it is. It could be jade. I think it's more likely to be a venturing. Some kind of stone anyway. And it has a really cute, um, it has an old-fashioned little, um, one of these, oh, what do you call them? Fish hook clasps. Looks like it might be silver, but it's not marked, so. Um, probably, I'm guessing this is a craft made, just because you didn't see, you normally see that kind of uh, fastener on a bracelet, it was usually a necklace. And, okay, I believe this is the last of the jewelry. One little tiny, there's a little turquoise, tiny little bird, liquid silver necklace. Very sweet, sweet little necklace. Okay, and I'm just going to add a few non-jewelry items to the end of this video. <laughs> well, this is jewelry, I guess. It's a pendant. I have no idea what this is, but isn't he cute? A little lion head. It looks ancient. It does have something on the back. Dang. Oh, I don't know. There's a mark on the back. But <laughs> it's very cute. We have 
I don't know quite exactly what to do with this. This is a little miniature Mexican corn grinder. Or, yeah, I guess that's what it's for. But it's tiny. <laughs> I don't know where this, what it's for. Um, we have a Mexican paper mache bobblehead tiger. Isn't that cute? He's, I'm pretty sure he's Mexican, although he's not marked Mexico. But he would have to be, I think. He's in nice condition. Isn't he cute? I love him. Uh, we have this hat, which is Ole, made in Mexico. And it says extra fino. One of the least comfortable hats I've ever worn. I'm not sure what what its purpose is, but it looks like a high quality hat. Uh, we have a couple of statues. We have this lovely, this looks like a California pottery, very tall, slender Virgin Mary statue. similar except in glass. It's like a, this is kind of weird, it looks like a hand blown but then the head is molded. I think, yeah it must be. I think. I don't know, maybe it was handmade. But um, she's lovely. Um, the bottom makes me think it's Murano just because it's got that nice ground flat I have no guarantees about that, but nice piece of glass. And then we have this wooden wall plaque, which I think this is Ethiopian. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it is. A woman churning milk or something. And look, oh, I just, she's got a little tiny baby on her back, <laughs> a little baby's face. And we have another wooden wall plaque. This is Mexican. Okay, looks like maybe a Mayan guy doing something. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what he's doing. Good question. But very nice. And lastly, we have a pottery green platter. And this is marked, oh dear, what does that say? Oh, it's tiny. Made in USA, W.S. George. I'll have to look that one up. It's kind of, um, you know, fiesta wear looking, but it's not fiesta wear. So, nice little platter. And I think that's it. Thanks so much for sticking with me. If you like any of these items, by the time you see this video, they will probably be for sale in my Etsy shop at vintagedazzle.etsy.com. Uh, if there's a particular piece that you'd like to see and you don't see it, go ahead and message me on Etsy or you can email me. All my contact information is in the description. And uh, please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my channel. I, these days I'm not doing videos very often, but um, uh, you can see more content like this on my channel. And uh, I hope everyone's having a great new year, and I will see you again soon. Bye!